Welcome to Today with Dr. J, where I give you the guidance and tools to figure out what works for you in your recovery. My name is Dr. D. Jaffe, and I'm here to help you live happier, more purposefully, and without limits. I tend to ruffle some feathers for doing this, but I do away with the notion of once an addict, always an addict, because I believe that anyone can beat their addiction with the right mindset, tools, support, and education. Nothing can stand in your way to success. You don't have to commit to anything but action. You don't have to have anything but motivation. Whether you want to quit, drink less, or simply become more mindful around mental health and addiction, I'm here for you. We move in and out of joy and struggle, suffering and contentment, happiness and sadness. As we move in and out of these feelings, there's the ability to become overwhelmed by them, right? Be taken over by the wave of emotions. And there's the ability to observe them. And we've talked about this analogy before, and I talked about it in the program, almost surf the wave of the emotions. But for all of us, while we have suffer and struggle in our present, past, and future potentially, we also have those other feelings, those positive emotions, right? Elation and surprise and joy and contentment and happiness. For some of you right now is actually pretty damn good. Life is pretty good right now. And the job is partially at least to enjoy that and remember to be present enough to love it and not dwell in the past and things that didn't work as well or be so anxious about the future that we don't understand and don't know to miss the joy and the, and the contentment and happiness that we have right now. And if that's you, becoming present could be one of the most powerful tools. And that's maybe where you're looking right now even if you struggled a lot in the past, is how do I get more present? Because the present is pretty damn good. For some of you, present's not that great. Present kind of sucks. And that's what you're working on. You're working on improving it. And there have been times of joy in the past. And we don't want to ignore those. We don't want to overwrite those. We don't want to pretend they didn't happen. We can actually learn quite a bit about them in that observer role. And so sometimes what we can do is go back to that past, reconnect to the feelings, reconnect to the behavior, reconnect to the environment. Who did we have around us? Where were we that made us and gave us that joy? What were we doing? Observe it, analyze it, and bring more of that into our present to try to elevate. Sometimes we forget those past lessons. We pretend like they've, they're gone, but they're not. They're here but we can be so present obsessed that we think now is the way it's always going to be. But that's also not true. And for some of you, and you may fit into this last category, not a lot of great times in the past <laughs> to look at and the present kind of sucks too. And so focusing on the future can be a really important tool for you. Where are you trying to go, right? Like I was saying in the beginning, if you don't know where you're trying to go, it's going to make it really hard to get there. And it's going to be really hard to understand what tools will bring you to that place, right? A car is great, but if you're trying to get from California to Hawaii, it's pretty much useless. An airplane is amazing, but if I'm going to my next door neighbor's house, it is of no importance to me whatsoever. The tools only fit the goal. They only fit the journey that you're trying to go on. So if the past has sucked and the present is not much better, let's focus on where we're trying to get to. See, a lot of times I hear people talk about how anxiety is when people are focused on the future and depression is when people are focused on the past, but I think that's bullshit. It depends on the perspective you have when you look at the past. Sure, if you're looking at everything you screwed up in the past, then you can be depressed about it. And if you're looking at all the uncertainty and fear you have about the future, then yes, you can be anxious about it, but that doesn't have to be the way it is. You can look to the future with anticipation. You've heard me talk about this before. There is no difference between excitement and anxiety other than your interpretation of what is going to happen. Anxiety is something is going to happen and I think it's going to suck and I'm going to screw it up. Excitement, something is going to happen and it's going to be good and I'm happy about it. That's the only difference. And I'm telling you right now, you have more of a choice in which perspective you take there than you believe. I'm not saying it's easy for all of us. And this is what I want to talk about primarily here today. It's going to take practice and exposure and trying on tools and talking to new friends and maybe coaching sessions and maybe reading new books, 
But each one of those things that you do is one little new experiment, one new little study that you are taking on. Why? To create that joy in the future, to improve the, the way you live in the present. That's all they are. Tiny little experiments. And while, unfortunately, we live in a world where most people out there tell you they know exactly what you need and the exact tool that you need is in front of you right now and they just so happen to have it for you. I don't think that's true. There are thousands, tens of thousands of available options for you. And it's up to you to run the experiment. But again, as I just mentioned, if the present is good, then focus a lot of effort on what's working right now so you understand it, can put it into practice, ritualize it, make it a habit, and then your future is pretty likely to be that way. It took me years, close to a decade, to get so many rituals and habits in my everyday life that I'm pretty predictable in terms of how my day-to-day -day will turn out, no matter what's happening in the world. That was not true of my past. But if my past was the, the best time in my life, my job would be to go back there and say, why, why did that work? Why was it so good? Analyze it, explore it, and then try to put some of those things in right now. And then I'm actually very big on future planning. I don't, I've worked on this for a long time in my life, but I specifically work on not imagining that the future is full of dread, fear, and anxiety, because that makes me not look forward to anything. And it makes me actually act from a fearful loss oriented place. And I don't want to live in that place where I'm hoarding in order to not suffer 10 years from now. That seems silly, but we can tend to do it. The next piece to this that is so massive is so many people get caught up in the number of experiments they have to run. I can't tell you the number of people I've worked with who say, well, I tried it though. I went to a therapist, didn't do anything. I read three books. They said they were going to have all the answers. Didn't do anything. I talked to my mom that time, I moved, and they, they name these things, sometimes 20 things, sometimes three, that they've done in the past as if what they're saying to you, hey, but I gave it a chance, I'm too broken for this thing. But the thing we're working on is your joy and your happiness for the rest of your life. Not the alcohol, not the drugs, not the porn, not the sugar, the happiness in your life forever. I hope that if one book doesn't work, you don't say to yourself, what's wrong with me? You say, okay, that book didn't fit what I needed. Let's go get another book. Listen to another person. Learn another tool. There are a lot of successful people in the, in the world and none of their lives look the same because we all require our own unique mix. And if you've read the book, you know this. If you watch the program, you know this. But if you knew, especially... It may feel, I hear this from people all the time, it may feel like, but, but I've tried so many things. Okay, try some more. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found the lessons helpful in your recovery. Click below to like, comment, and subscribe. Plus, if you want to find out more about the work that we do at Ignited, visit IGNTD.com for more.